Hello, what's up guys? Uh, it's Kevin here. I'm here to do a video about my most used items, at least as of late. Um, I'm gonna be splitting this into two parts uh, because, you know, in case there's some categories that you don't really uh, care that much about. I have the first part of the video is gonna be apparel, so that includes like clothing, footwear, um, maybe accessories, etc. And then the second part of the video is going to be pretty much everything else. Um, I just thought I'd say that there will be a timestamp on the screen or in a pinned comment and or in a pinned comment. So if you guys are interested in that or that or maybe just watch all the way through because there are going to be some things that you probably wouldn't have expected. So starting off apparel, it's going to be basically some sweatpants suit type of thing. So. I have been wearing sweatsuits for the past like maybe month or so uh, because of the fact that I am cold. I'm cold and I want to be cozy. It's the season to be cozy during winter as well as early spring. I want to be cozy as hell. So when I get home or when I'm just doing a quick errand or I'm running to the grocery store, etc. You'll see me mostly in sweatpants and a pair of white trainers. Pretty much, I wear my John sweatpants and my John crew neck. Both, I believe they're the J90 models. Uh, keeps me warm, and I think it looks really nice with New Balances or beat up white trainers. If, uh, my sweatpants are gray, but my crew neck is cream. But I also have a hoodie that's gray, so I can go gray gray or gray cream, etc. Really like it. Second up is going to be black t-shirt with dark indigo denim. I think that is such a classic look in my opinion. The indigo pair that I have currently, I am wearing the APC Jalen collab, the petite standard. And for the black t-shirt, I'm just wearing my Amazon basics, which you can check both items out. My previous video, um, my essentials video, which I'll leave a card somewhere. I think that it's very much a street smart look. Uh, I think it can lend itself either way. It's just such a nice canvas. And I think what really can accentuate or make something lean more street or more smart is the outerwear or the footwear. So I like to have either more casual sneakers and maybe a more formal top so that the top looks formal and then the casual sneaker kind of throws it off a little bit or not throws it off, but adds like a little bit of a spice or a little bit of like an accent to it. So I would traditionally pair this with either a white pair of shoes um, or maybe my Amelion Dior New Balances. I think those look really nice with it. Next up is going to be something that is a little bit more of like a smarter look, I would say. Um, I have my John Elliott chinos, which are dry string, drawstring chinos as well as the Amazon Basics T that I've been wearing. Um, those two, I think, work very well because they lend themselves a little bit more towards the smart look. And I've also been wearing my loafers. Um, I've pulled out my loafers for the first time in a really long time. And I actually really like how the loafers look with my, uh, my John Elliott drawstring chinos. And I think they work very well together where the t-shirt is a bit casual, the chinos can go either way, and then the loafers are a little bit more formal. So I think that paired up with my unique low U kind of uh, like shirling jacket works very, very well. And I've mentioned it a few times, but I've been really in love with white sneakers, whether they be cleaner white sneakers, beat up white sneakers, my favorite ones or the ones that I've been wearing most recently and more frequently is a pair of custom beat up Air Jordan um, yin yangs that I took off the black swoosh. I erased um, the Air Jordan logo and then I took off the Nike tag and it just looks so simple. Very, very clean. Um, as well as John Elliott Air Force Ones with a Lunar Lawn insole. Very, very comfortable. I've been wearing uh, the loafers like I mentioned. That one is a little bit more uh, formal but that one is a black shoe. Also, obviously, the Jound Club Seas A1. Beautiful, beautiful. As well as uh, the Amelion Dior 990 V2s. Those, very, very nice. Those add a pop of color to pretty much any outfit that I wear. 
Now that for the apparel that that's out of the way, um, I will be talking about pretty much everything else that I use. And first off, I will be talking about my Aesop products. If you guys don't know, I recently got a second part-time job at Aesop, which is sort of like a skincare, home care, personal care brand, and they have so many, so many products. So I've been using just a lot of their products, especially the skincare, fragrance, and home care. Those three categories I really, really like. Uh, for skincare, I use the Fabius Face Cleanser, Fabius Face Oil, um, the Purifying Exfoliant Paste, uh, the Into Minds Toner, Lucent Facial Concentrate. I feel like I'm just like fucking, just like listing them on and on and on. Reverence Hand Balm, one of my favorite scents from there. Um, as well as Eastros Room Spray and Whill Fragrance. Um, the Whill is an Eau de Parfum. It comes in sort of like a 50 ml bottle, like moi. Um, I am running low of it, so that just shows how much I use it. And uh, I really tend towards more um, smokier scents, in my opinion. Uh, but the facial skincare, I have more normal combination skin. Lately, because of the weather, it's become a bit more dry. So that's why I've introduced oils and I really like it. Uh, makes me glow. So. Check those guys out. Another thing I've been into is coffee cups. So you guys have seen me pretty much past few videos. Um, I've been using my coffee cups because I usually record the video near the early hours of the day so that I can get really decent lighting. Um, but I have two coffee cups I really like. Uh, one from Contigo as well as the second one from Keep Cup. They're both gifts. Uh, the Contigo one was gifted to me by my girlfriend. I use that really frequently when I want to keep the drinks at their temperature uh, for an extended amount of time because it is insulated as well as if I want a larger drink, uh, I usually get that. I believe that's 16 ounces. And then a keep cup, a glass keep cup that I actually got gifted to me um, by my work for my birthday. Uh, that one, it's made of glass, so it doesn't keep the temperature very well, which is good for hotter drinks because you don't want them like crazy hot. Um, I usually make my drinks cold, but I use the keep cup in my opinion more at home um, as well as when I want to limit my caffeine consumption. Uh, the Contigo I use on trips, um, like when I go to work or like when I go in lab, um, etc. When I want a prolonged amount of caffeine or drinks or etc. Or at least if I want to even keep my water cold and I put like my giant ice cubes in there. So I really like that. Next up is Muji stationery. So I've recently been getting into um, journaling, um, planning, as well as just keeping sort of both a meditation journal as well as an audiobook sort of note section. I've been using the Muji 2020 planner. I believe they're on sale. I got them for pretty cheap. I think they were 30% off or something like that, as well as the small notebooks. I really, really like those for jotting up small notes as well as um, kind of like managing my money uh, as well as um, keeping small notes for audiobooks that or books that you are reading currently. I really do like their polycarbonate pen. I'm not 100% sure if they still sell them online because I remember they were undergoing some change with like the models but I really like their polycarbonate pen and I have so many refills for that because I end up using it so much. So I really like the, the clickiness of it. I know that sounds weird, but just the tactile feel of it, as well as how the ink writes on paper. I just really like that, as well as it's just a very clean, clear design. So I enjoy that. Next up is my Chemex setup. So I have a Chemex that I've been using for the past six months. Really, really been enjoying that. I like the fact that it gives me sort of like a morning routine to do. Uh, as well as I really like making a Japanese iced coffee pour overs type of thing. Um, I find that very good because I like a lighter coffee. Um, I drink my coffee black, but I don't like it too heavily concentrated. I don't necessarily think that it like dilutes the flavor necessarily. I just think I get to enjoy it for a longer period of time. I also have a cold brew setup that I really enjoy. Um, and then for the pour over, I have a reusable filter as well as a, a Hario filter, which I bought the wrong size for, um, but I'm just trying to use 
all of it just so that when I do or when or if, I guess I should say, I do repurchase it, I can buy it in the larger size because I think I bought it in too small of a size for the Chemex setup that I got because I think this is made for a V60 rather than a Chemex, um, but works perfectly fine. I haven't run into any issues so far. Um, and the reusable filter, I just want to be a little bit more sustainable. I don't necessarily feel like it changes the taste all that much. I just have to make sure to like one, keep it clean to um, maybe like wet the mesh filter ahead of time, uh, just so that maybe if there is any like metal or tinny flavor, I can wash that all out and then just go with it. Last but not least, it is my Mission Workshop VX Monty. I've done a review of this like years and years and years ago and I still use it. It has not failed me. I've used this for multiple trips. This is my daily backpack to usually both of my workplaces, um, waterproof in case it rains. It's just been through a lot and it still looks almost exactly as I purchased it. And honestly, it's lasted me quite a long time and I don't see it breaking anytime soon. It's been a few years. So yeah, Mission Workshop VX Monty. And last but not least, I've been reading a few books as well as listening to a few audiobooks uh, that I've personally enjoyed. Um, I'm just going to be listing them out, giving maybe a few brief descriptions on a few of them. Um, first off, Man Searches for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Very, very um, amazing book. Uh, I'm just getting through the first part of it, which it's sort of an autobiographical depiction of him being in Auschwitz. I think it's quite rough, quite harsh, but I also think if somebody in such a harsh environment can still find meaning in life, that gives hope for the rest of us. Next up is The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Five Love Languages, I think that's something crucial when dealing with not even a significant other, but when you're dealing with people in general, because everybody does have sort of a different love language or a mixture of a few different ones. If you can get past the sort of like religious aspect that Gary tries to interject, I think there's a lot of gold in there. Or maybe if you appreciate that religious aspect of it, perfectly fine as well. Next up is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. I think this is something that is sort of fun to read, not necessarily anything that you'll find a very um, deep, provoking, um, I guess, like, it won't give you a crazy epiphany. I just thought it was a fun read. I thought it was an interesting take on, like, a self-help book, I guess I should say. Um, the Third Door by Alex Benayan. Um, Alex Benayan, I found out about him from a different YouTuber. His name is Matt Diavella. Uh, he runs a small podcast, and Gary was on it. It was a lot of fun. Um, the Third Door, it's very charming. Um, as well as it has sort of like a youthful spin to it, kind of like uh, the Mark Manson book, but I think Alex's is a, is a little bit more uh, helpful and aspirational. Aspirational, or I guess aiming to inspire you. Next up is Goodbye Things, a new, or the new Japanese minimalism by Fumio Sasaki. Uh, Fumio, uh, sort of, um, but I think this isn't necessarily like an instructional um, book where like Murray Kondo's was like very, very to the point. He does give a few points of advice and a few kind of guidelines, but I think it's a very interesting way as well as it's a different um, avenue of looking at minimalism compared to either a Western view or compared to a Marie Kondo's. They both have some similarities, obviously, but I think that's also an interesting read if you did enjoy like Marie Kondo's. Last but not least is The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. I think Robert Greene is a great author, uh, great self-help, but I do think with all of his books, you have to take it with a grain of salt because um, I guess this is sort of like framing it like some um, CEOs or uh, people in positions of power think exactly like this. And I think it's interesting or it's almost necessary to learn uh, how they think just so that you can maneuver around it, whether it be any sort of power structure, not necessarily in the corporate world, but even beyond with friends, family, etc. So I think that's uh, crucial. And I find it sort of like a fun read because you get to learn a lot of different things 
um, from different cultures that you didn't even knew existed. Um, he pulls from a variety of kind of historical figures and literary literary figures that I think are very interesting. So give that a read. And I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let me know if there's anything in uh, your daily routine that you thought was kind of unique that you'd like to leave in the comment down below if you'd like to share. Thank you guys so much and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.